I started small time, dope game, cocaine, pushing rocks on the block. I'm never broke, man. And that's just one of the many iconic opening lines for Mr. Brad Jordan, Scarface. What's good, y'all? It's your boy, Mixtape Moth. If you are rocking with this content, please make sure to hit that like button and subscribe to the channel. But today, I'm gonna rank Scarface's 11 solo albums. You know Brad Jordan is a rap legend and Southern hip hop pioneer. And if I had to list one artist who I feel would be responsible for uh, putting that Dirty South sound on the map, it would be Scarface. Some folks tend to forget that Face came in the game back in 1986 with the Ghetto Boys, which means he was getting busy at the same time as those famed uh, 80s golden era MCs like Big Daddy Kane, Cool G Rap, and Rakim. And Scarface has such a strong and consistent uh, solo discography that few can rival, and I feel his name isn't mentioned as much as it should be when we are talking about artists with strong consecutive album runs. He's in my personal top five of all time and I consider him the true king of the South. Uh, but with that being said, let me jump right ahead into this ranking. Starting with number 11, I have My Homies 2. This was the sequel to his 1998 double album. Now My Homies 2 dropped in 2006 and it was also a double album. Uh, obviously, it's my least favorite at number 11. And to be honest, I don't remember a whole lot about it other than liking a handful of tracks. Uh, it was more of a label compilation thing than anything. If you could trim the fat, there are some good Scarface songs, tracks like Definition of a Real, uh, with Zero and Cube, Streetlights, uh, Gotta Get Paid, and the Ghetto Boys reunion track of My Life are the standouts. I almost thought this project was a mixed bag that kind of played like a mixtape, and there were definitely some awkward uh, club records that have no replay value in 2023. Uh, like some of these records really needed to stay in that 2005, 2006, Tall T era. I know y'all got the visual. But hey, if you are a big face fan, then there are some songs that you can add to a playlist for show. At number 10, I have My Homies, which dropped in 1998. It's technically a Scarface album, uh, but it's mainly a rap -a -lot compilation showcasing some of the talent on that label in 1998 is there were strong performances from artists like Devin the Dude, members of Face Mob, and UGK. Some of the best songs on here included My Homies, which had that signature rap a lot bounce, uh, Southside Houston, Texas, which I always felt could be looked at as uh, the Houston version of California Love, uh, and Don't Testify was a sinister Banger. Now, two of the biggest singles from this project were F Faces uh, and Homies and Thugs Remix with Master P. Uh, both are pretty popular face songs. Uh, F Faces had the stellar Devin the Dude hook and uh, an incredibly lush and wavy Mike Dean instrumental. I also liked Rules for Real Dudes, uh, the introspective Win, Lose, or Draw with that Johnny P hook, R.I.P. Johnny P. Uh, Sleeping in My Nikes was also good and the banger, Greed. So I didn't love all songs equally on my homies, uh, but as a whole, it was a solid and well-produced compilation for the time. At number nine, I have Emeritus. This was his 2008 release that was supposed to be his final album. So this was a mostly strong project that had some great songs, but I felt the production was slightly less potent than previous Face albums. Maybe my standards were a little too high, you know, considering it was supposed to be his final one. Although, look, there were quite a few standout songs like the banger High Powered, uh, Forgot About Me with Wayne and Bum B, and this easily had a top 10 Bum B feature. He definitely spazzed. Still Here, produced by Knotts, was a gem, and uh, Who Are They with Ill Mind didn't disappoint either. There's also this super smooth and raunchy high note produced by Jake Wan. I also like Unexpected, as I feel it's a very eerie and underrated face track. And lastly, Emeritus, produced by Scram Jones, is a hard-hitting boom bap banger. At number eight, I have Deeply Rooted. Now, I would consider uh, this 2015 release to be uh, Face's most laid-back and mature album 
in his catalog. The production was polished, soulful, melodic, and modern sounding for the time. Uh, some of my favorites from here were Dope Man Pushin', it's an atmospheric banger. Uh, FU2 is Zero, which has a striking chorus from the Mo City Dawn. I like No Problems a lot too, as that was his most aggressive and hard hitting on the album where you could really feel his hunger. The slow rolling anything was good also, and Do What I Do with Nas and Ross was solid. I also dug the introspective You with CeeLo Green and the very spiritual and gospel themed all bad. As a whole, Deeply Rooted is a four mic album that showed how well, you know, he was able to adapt to the changing production sounds at the time, especially for a vet. Hopefully this isn't his final release. It's a good chance it might be, but if it is, uh, it's a good one to go out on. For number seven, I have The World Is Yours Face to Face. Uh, this was Scarface's second album released in 93. It's an underrated project that doesn't get as much love as some of his other releases. The production on this album showed a slight transition from the faster paced early 90s sampling sounds on his debut to more of a, a dirty South G-Funk sound. The bulk of the beats came from N.O. Joe and uh, John Beto with additional production from Scarface and Mike Dean at this time was uh, just responsible for the engineering. He didn't fully get into uh, being one of the main Rap-A-Lot producers until around the diary. This record had a nice variety of different style tracks. It was raw, aggressive, but also psychedelic and trippy. You had the thumping opener, letting them know, uh, and also the In Your Face record coming at. I also like The Wall, where he took you on a psychedelic journey and the trippy he's dead. There was the slow down uh, weed anthem, but it's also a big rap -a -lot anthem. Uh, Let Me Roll, that's one of his classic songs. Strictly For My Funk Levers was cool, but it ultimately came across as a blatant ripoff of Dre's The Chronic. But this album contains what's possibly a top five of Face Song of all time with Now I Feel You. For number six, I have The Last of a Dying Breed. This 2000s release has some of his darkest and most personal records, uh, but it's still a well-balanced collection of songs. On The Last of a Dying Breed, I feel Face showed a lot of love towards East Coast hip hop. Uh, he had a beat from Eric Sermon, features from Redman and Jay-Z, and he even remixed BDP's I'm Still Number One. You had the moody and pain-filled track, Look In My Eyes, also the dark and haunting Sorry For What, uh, as well as In My Time, all of which had that dark, jury quality. But there were also bangers like They Down With Us featuring UGK. The Bun B verse here was Bananas. Uh, the true OG clearly left Earth with his flow. There was the sinister Watch Your Step uh, and the sexually charged in and out uh, which had that ear grabbing hook from Devin the Dude. OG to me, produced by Mike Dean, was a slept on gem where Face talked about uh, rap a lot and Jay Prince being targeted by the DEA. Uh, in fact, Face vehemently called out snitches throughout this entire album. Yeah, overall, it's a strong for my project that slept on and still sounds great in 2023. At number five, I have The Untouchable, uh, which I believe is a Face's best selling album. Uh, it was an immensely popular release from that year. This was the album where Mike Dean got a lot of shine on the production front, uh, but Face and Toe Capone uh, were also present on the board. And this album, The Untouchable, took on an even uh, smoother, mellower G-Funk tone than The Diary. Uh, it's essentially a mafioso album, uh, but with enough Houston flavor. Sonically, I always felt it's a Face's most crisp and polished project. Singles like Mary Jane were a huge hit, as well as Smile with Tupac, and Smile ended up being uh, one of Face's most known songs. I also like No Warning, which was chill, uh, chilling, and nocturnal, and the down south anthem, Southside. Money Make the World Go Round with Daz was ultra smooth, and the track For Real uh, is a personal Favorite Scarface to me, the way he talks about his come up in the streets over uh, Mike Dean's ethereal production was incredible. For number four, I have made. This 2007 release was probably the best drop of that year. 
Um, it's a strong four and a half mic album for me, uh, and it had the perfect length. A 12 track. You had brilliant heartfelt storytelling like on the record Suicide Note and Boy Meets Girl. Uh, also hard hitting bangers like Big Dog Status, Never and Get Out My Face. Really the track Never is a timeless banger and Big Dog Status is a Dirty South classic that was made for pulling up to the scene and uh, cracking the pavement. There was the single Girl You Know with Trey Songs that got a lot of radio burn. Uh, and speaking of burn, the track Burn with Zero was also a highlight. Yeah, I don't know if others would have made this high on the list, uh, but it's always been one of my favorite and um, go-to Scarface project. For number three, I have The Fix. This 2002 release was his one and only Def Jam project. This was around the time that he also served as the president of Def Jam South. This was when Scarface really started to receive his flowers in the industry. Uh, you had three beats from Kanye, and I recall here, uh, this is when Kanye was on the verge of becoming uh, in high demand. Kanye's produced Guess Who's Back is a certified five mic classic, and one of the dopest songs of the 2000s in general. This album had a couple of faces of most spiritual records with What Can I Do and Someday and How Can I Forget His Timeless Anthem, uh, My Block, which was a smash single in 2002. And In Between Us had this flawless, unique instrumental from Mike Dean, a dope Nas feature, and an intoxicating, haunting hook from Tanya Haran. Yeah. The fix can be played from top to bottom with zero skips. Uh, it is a five mic album without a doubt and easily one of the best projects uh, from the 2000s decade. At number two, I have Mr. Scarface is back. Uh, this was his classic 1991 debut uh, and a record that contains some of Brad Jordan's most iconic songs. This album, along with the Ghetto Boys' We Can't Be Stopped, uh, also released that same year, uh, would lay the very early foundation for that Houston sound. Starting with the track Mr. Scarface, a Smithsonian hip hop song uh, that showcased a face's knack for storytelling. His detailed storytelling was movie like and could only really be rivaled by Cool G Rap at that time. You had Money and the Power, uh, which was the original uh, down south hustling anthem that just symbolized the come up uh, and was likely every dope boy's theme music in the early 90s. The track A Minute to Pray, A Second to Die is like a mini movie in itself. Uh, the way Face told these stories of the struggle down south was so cinematic. Also, Diary of a Madman was really ahead of his time in that Face discussed mental health, but in a hard and gangster way. And I'm Dead was an eerie track where Face rap from the perspective of his ghost. Uh, and there was really nothing like it at the time. And that brings us to the number one Scarface album, which is The Diary. Uh, now this 1994 release set the standard for what Rap-A-Lot uh, as a label would sound like for the remainder of the 90s and into the 2000s. This album perfectly blended the rawness found on uh, Mr. Scarface's back and uh, The World Is Yours and mixed it with some live instrumentation in G-Funk uh, and the end result was one of the best gangster rap albums of all time. This album also showed uh, Mike Dean's and Scarface's chemistry on the production front. You have Five Mike storytelling on the classic single I Seen a Man Die, uh, which is one of the uh, darkest commercial hits next to, let's say, Shook Ones. Hand of the Dead Body with Ice Cube and Devin the Dude had a chilling beat, an instantly uh, memorable hook from Devin the Dude and one of my favorite Ice Cube verses. There were also menacing records like The White Sheet, No Tears, and G's, uh, where his ruthlessness as an MC was on full display. Uh, Jesse James also had a unique a uh, Wild West meets rap a lot aesthetic. Unfortunately, the Source magazine dropped the ball initially by not giving it five mics, uh, but later they went back and uh, fixed it. You know, the diary to a lot of heads is uh, the Bible for Southern rap, and I feel this project, the diary, should be looked at in the same vein as albums like Doggy Style, Illmatic, and The Infamous. But yeah, 
Those are Scarface's albums ranked from numbers 1 to 11. Let me know in the comment section what your ranking would look like. Uh, but it's your boy Mixtape Moth. I'm signing out. Please make sure to hit that like button and subscribe to the channel. As always, it's peace and blessings. Ranking the Scarface albums. The true king of the South. One.